Hi, this is Tyler Disney with Integral Group Oakland, and this is going to be the final video, video number five of a video series on families. And so in this video, I'm going to show how to build a schedule if you don't have one. So in the last video, we had a family, a heat exchanger family with a bunch of parameters in it, and we lucked out and we had a heat exchanger schedule. So in this video, I'm going to say, well, what if we didn't have that heat exchanger schedule? What if it didn't exist? What if you needed to create it from scratch? So this is how to do it. Uh, go to View, go to Schedules, and Schedule Quantities. Ignore that. And uh, so what this is, is this is asking what category of element do you want the schedule to be? And we're, we want it to be a mechanical equipment schedule. We would like to call it I'm going to give it a slightly different name so that I don't make a duplicate mech. Uh, heat exchanger schedule. Great. And now I get to pick which, uh, which parameters go into my schedule. So uh, the first one I want is type mark. That's, like, that's going to be the HX parameter of a heat exchanger. And then I want mark. That's going to be the one, like heat exchanger one, heat exchanger two. And then I'm going to look for a manufacturer. And so there's there's two here. There's this one that's in all caps, and there's this one that's in lower caps. Manufacturer is a. This is one that I made in our uh, shared parameters file. Uh, you don't need it actually. All uh, families come with manufacturer parameter that works in schedules. So grab that, um, grab the lower caps model. And you know there's a lot of um, parameters in here so you kinda gotta know what you're uh, looking for. It might take a little bit to get used to uh, looking at all this stuff. But the nice thing is that for the uh, equipment specific ones, I try to start them all out with the same acronym. So here's all of my heat exchanger parameters. So I'm going to shift select all of the heat exchanger guys, add those. And I also want operating weight. And now there's two here. Uh, when you're making shared parameters, some things, things, sometimes things get a little messed up. So I've got a duplicate here. I'm pretty sure the first one is the one that's correct. Um, if I guess wrong, it's really easy to remove it and, and put another one back in. So not a big deal. And I want notes. And I think that's that's pretty much all I want. Oops. Got a little stray guy in here. That's for a heat recovery coil. Don't want that. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go over to filter. Remember, well. Let's see what happens when I don't filter it. So again, I've just set the category to mechanical equipment, and I've got these these fields, and I'm going to hit OK. So here's my new schedule, and it's populated with every piece of mechanical equipment in the project, which honestly isn't that much, but um, there it is. So I actually only want pieces of equipment where the type mark is set to HX to show up in here. So I'm going to go to the fields. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to say filter by type mark equals capital HX. Great. So I'm going to close that. So there's, there's a few things going on here. So right now this is working, um, but it doesn't look very good. And so I want to do some things to make it look better. So each of these columns corresponds to one of the parameters that I added in the fields uh, window. And so these are all parameters that have very specific names, right? Type mark, mark, manufacturer, H, X, L, E, W, T. I can actually change this text in the column however I want. And it's not going to go back and change the name of the parameter because it, it can't do that. But I can ch modify these headers up here however I want them to be so that my schedule looks the way I want them to be. Like I don't want anything uh, to be lowercase model capacity. 
Alright, this looks good. So, another thing that you'll notice here is that there's this big bar across the middle of this gap. We don't want that. So, we want to go to Appearance. And there's this checkbox that says blank row before data. Uncheck that, and that'll fix that. And another thing that's going on is, so we have the, the load side of the heat exchanger, and then we have the supply side of the heat exchanger. We'd like to group these together. So select from here, heat exchanger, load, entering water temperature, all the way to these four parameters are what we want. Well, actually, before we do that, let's reorder them a little bit. So go back to the fields. And we would actually like the, for example, the temperatures to be next to each other, right? So I'm going to select the leaving water temperature and move it up next to the entering water temperature on the load side. And I'm going to do the same on the supply side. And that GPM water, GPM water pressure drop, right? And I'm also going to select my heat exchanger material and number plates. And I'm going to move them down to the end after the load and supply side information. I'm going to take the heat exchanger type and move it up right before the capacity. So that's that's the order of parameters I want. Right. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna uh, click and drag over the load side. And I'm gonna right click and say group headers. And so that creates uh, this group of headers. I'm gonna say load side. And now I've named these parameters very specific things so that, they, so that I know what they are when I'm looking at them and when I'm populating schedules. But I don't want this text to look like this in my schedule. I want this just to say entering water temperature. And I don't need to say L because I can see it says load right there. And I don't need it to say heat exchanger because by God we know this is heat exchanger schedule. So I'm just going to say entering water temperature uh, F. I'm not putting a degree symbol in there just because I currently forgot what the alt command is for degree symbol. And so this one's going to be leaving water temperature, F. This is going to be GPM. Well, you don't have to put that, do you? I'm going to say water pressure drop. And I want the water pressure drop units to be in uh, inches of water. H2O. Oh, water pressure drop in inches of H2O. Uh, but you notice that the units for this is in PSI. And so I'm going to change these units to inches of water. Um, so I've got, um, and I believe that's in formatting. Yeah, formatting, and again this is water pressure drop on the load side. So water pressure drop on the load side. Hit field format. And see it says use project settings is checked. And what that means is that um, every project file uh, has, a, uh, has settings for what the preferred units are for different types of values. So uh, water pressure, air pressure, cooling loads, heating loads, weight, all sorts of things. You can say the preferred unit for this is PSI or inches of mercury or whatever you want. And so the default uh, settings for pressure in this project happens to be pounds per square inch, uh, which is fine. It's just not what we want for this schedule right here. So I'm going to uncheck use project settings. I'm going to manually change the units to feet of water. And right now I'm going to keep the unit symbol. I'm going to hit OK. So great. It changes the unit to what I want. And now it's important, I think, to leave the units there when you're initially setting this up so that you make sure you know what units Revit thinks a specific value is in. Because if this just says inches of water, but Revit thinks this value is in PSI, and you type in, you know, uh, 0.2, and you think you're typing in inches because there's no unit symbol there, but Revit thinks you're typing in PSI, it can cause headaches down the road. You don't want to be doing those things where you're not paying attention to units and you think it's one thing and Revit thinks it's another thing, because the next person who comes along and turns the units on is going to look at it and say, oh, that's interesting. It's 0.2 PSI, which isn't going to be right, right? 
So be careful about units. Revit's very strict about them, and so should you. Okay, so I'm going to group the supply side uh, units together by again uh, uh, clicking and dragging the ones I want to group, hitting group headers, say source side, and I'm going to change this uh, entering water temperature, F, leaving water temperature, F, GPM, water pressure drop in inches H2O. And I'm going to change these guys' units to feet of water. And notice that you can also control how many um, decimal places uh, there are uh, in your in your project. So that's a nice way. So you can really have you have a lot of control in terms of cleaning up um, how your schedule presents itself. Uh, Steel plates, hundred notes, two. Okay, so that that's looking pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of I'm happy with most of this. I don't like the fact that this is offset to the left. So I'm going to go back into formatting, and I'm going to select all of these parameters, and I'm going to say alignment center. Apply that. Okay, so that looks a lot better. Uh, the one thing I don't want to be centered is the notes. I want the notes to be formatted to the left because I'm like that. So align it to the left. Perfect. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Now we need to see what it looks like on a sheet. Oops. Two. There we go. So I'm going to open up the schedules sheet. Here we go and find the schedule that I just made, which is Mac Heat Exchanger Schedule. I'm gonna drag and drop. Okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. And this, uh, uh, when we put the schedule onto the sheet is where we can uh, modify things like the column width. Um, if you change the column width in this, it won't change how it presents here. All right, looks good. Um, now what I like to do is I like to add uh, a nice thick border around this, so it gives a little bit of, um, um, well, I just think it looks nice. So I'm going to go back to my schedule, go to appearance. For the graphics, I'm going to say that the outline um, is in detail bold. And grid lines are thin lines, that's fine. Show title, show headers. Yeah, I think everything else looks pretty good. There. And so now it changed the line type around the outline to be a thicker, bolder line uh, than the interior ones, which I think looks nice. So that's it. I'm done. I have created from scratch a new heat exchanger schedule. Um, yeah, I think this concludes the family video series. Um, you You've gone from a family you got off the internet all the way to a family that schedules inside of Revit uh, pretty effortlessly. I know this was kind of a lot in the videos, but once you get the hang of it, it moves really quickly. And it's an investment too, because every time you do this, you have that family forever, and you can always load it into new projects, um, and you're good to go. So I hope this helps. Give me any feedback. If you have questions, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and if you want to send me beer, um, I can send you my address. All right. Thanks a lot.